What is going on, everybody? I'd like to welcome you back to another fun-filled, exciting episode of Photoshop shit. Today we're going to make... I guess it's a cave. Yeah, I guess that's a cave. There's a... Looks like there's a spider in there. All right, so now we're going to do what we normally do and make a new new layer over here I'm going to start with the lasso tool and just make it just completely freaking random shape here this is going to be our foreground stuff right foreground stuff and just fill that in with some kind of dark-ish color not totally black but not totally not black so I just fill that in using option delete right and then we're going to make another new layer and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fill in with a little bit lighter gray. Right? Because as it goes back in space, it gets lighter. And we're just going to plop another big fat shape in here. And I'm thinking this is some kind of, you know, vertical wall type of thing. Right? Something like that. Make the background a little darker. Because uh, we're going to kind of do it a little backwards. We'll add our highlight in later. Make another new layer. And we'll just make another big plobby old vertical shape on the right here. Fill this in with, you know, another gray. Pick a gray, any gray. It's all good. We don't merit it anything. Yeah, you can mess with your levels over here, you know. It's really up to you. I mean, the technique is always the same. Use the lasso tool, make a shape, fill it in. Or you can paint it in with the texture brush. And make another new layer. But boom, if I was a Pokemon, that'd be my name. Make another new layer. And we're just gonna paint in some just random, random crap back here. Maybe that big texture brush, maybe a little soft brush. Yeah, throw in another big shape. Yeah, I'll fill this in with this. This we're gonna paint this one in with this big ass, big ass kind of textury rocky, rocky brush. I'd find something good. Right, you can rotate it by just hitting R on the keyboard. Hold that shift and it'll lock into you know north, south, east, west. I right, move that around, it's like rock nugget. I'm gonna push these down, you know. When I was making this, I didn't really have a plan here, I just had a just kind of a thought of just kind of a dark space. Right, and we got some darks, we got some mids, let's add a little bit of a highlight in here, right? Make a little indicator. Maybe there's some light, you know, maybe, maybe there's something, something up there somewhere. I don't know, maybe there's a little door, maybe there's a tunnel through there, I don't know. Sometimes you just need, need a little tunnel. So we're going to go on these, this other layer here. Then just over it, I'm just going to grab a piece and just with levels, just change that a little bit. Maybe there's a little indicator of a... And a light, there's some light coming through. And a, little, a little cave action, right? Maybe there's a little, little kind of just lasso tooling out some squiggles, squaggles over here, and just you know, fill them in with a little light. And light coming through here, just any brush will do. It doesn't matter. I just. Not worrying too much about it, just feeling, looking for shapes. Just having a basic idea. I was walking around today and just looking at how beautiful everything was outside. While I might not have been in a cave or seen something like this, I, I sure do appreciate it all being there. Saw a lot of animals today. It really was something wonderful. I just kind of taking these textures on here and screwing around with them. You can give it a little Command T. If you Option click, it gets you in that warp menu, and you can kind of pull it around and tweak it around and just try to find something that, that feels good. You know, rocks are great. Because you know nature, nature provides for basically any type of rock, and you're probably probably gonna get something that looks good. 
I'm adding just more layers here. I'm adding what I call like a, I call it a hero layer. I know that's not the name of it. But there's a name for when you make these layers and you hit option and you make that layer kind of affect only the layer below it. I think it's like an alpha layer. It's, it's not an adjustment layer, that's something else. I, I call it a hero layer because to me, it's a hero. Like it's, it's being flexible. It's trying to help me do what I want to do. So yeah, that's how that works. We're just dragging this all around, looking for our little cave. You know, and at this point, feel free to experiment with different shapes. You kind of can't do anything wrong, right? Just get a big old brush and just plarb it on there and make yourself make yourself some some fun little textures to use right so here i'm just making just making a chunk of texture i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna i'm gonna rotate it where i want i'm gonna hit return then go back into the transform command t and then we'll go a little perspective on here a little distort and we'll make ourselves some basically pretty feasible ground right we're just gonna take that and we're gonna do the hero layer <laughs> Where you just hold down option, kind of select between the two layers, and this layer will only affect that layer. And we're just going to lay it over this, kind of the foreground piece, the very first piece that we made. And we're not worried about it too much. We don't want to, we don't want to get stuck, you know. Maybe it goes, goes a little back in there. You can kind of walk through that little cave. It's a happy cave. I mean, it's... I don't, I don't really, I can't say for sure that it's a happy cave. I mean, I bet, I bet some bad things have happened in that cave. I just, it's just the way, the way it goes. Oh, somebody got to ruin it for everybody, right? I had fun making this, even though, you know, whether the end result, if we think that it's the greatest thing ever, I can't say. I'd probably say not. But I recorded the whole thing, and I thought it made sense to share it. You know, just spend a little time, talk with you guys, and just kind of explain a little bit of what I did. Maybe you like it, maybe you're like, you can suck it. And that's fair, and I would be happy to. But I'm going to make another little layer over here on the top. And just with a big soft brush, I want, to, I want to imply a little bit of just light coming in here, right? So you can, you can tap the brush and hold down shift and then just tap again where you want it to give you a nice straight line with a little bit of fall off. You can always erase a little bit of that out to kind of blend it in. Make a new layer and add a little more light. You don't want to do this all in one layer, right? Because let's say the first 10 strokes you made were, were great. And then, you know, you kind of made another good stroke, but maybe it's a little too heavy. And you, know, you want to be able to blend these around and play around with them. So in the beginning, we're just going to make a few different layers here. One with an immediate kind of glow coming in. Another one that has like a light, a light beam, just big soft brush, tap, shift, tap, go a nice straight line. And I'll play with those values a little bit. And I'm going to add, just try to get a little color going in here. So I'm thinking a little blues, a little, little browns, and don't mind anything. It's just, just making a layer. I'm going to put it on color. I'm going to probably just super decrease the opacity of it here and, and there we go let's darken this up with a little curve adjustment layer and before i said that these hero layers they were adjustment layers they're they're obviously not because adjustment layers you know sometimes they're the real heroes here because look what that just did so i made a new adjustment layer it cranked cranked it all down got myself a lot of mood and i can just go in on this mask here with a big soft brush black right because black removes the takes it away white will kind of paint it in 
Now we're just going to paint out little bits of here and we can hold down the command key and click on any of these layers for any of these pieces and select them and then just have the ability to just paint in this kind of adjustment layer and the little parts that we need and just have a little fun. So we got this brown and this, you know, just seeing if we can't breathe a little. Get out of this black and white, this black and white world. That's okay if, if what you think you did kind of sucks. So <laughs> you can always go back. It's gonna suck a lot of times. And we're just doing really basic stuff here, so that really nothing you can do is wrong here. So we go into the gradient map. It's another fun adjustment layer that you can kind of diddle around with there. And I got some blue and some brownish more. I'm just gonna see if we can't incorporate that in and maybe unify this a little bit. And at this point, still just experimenting, just kind of screwing around. And I go through phases, like sometimes I want to draw or paint or whatever you want to call it is that we do with Photoshop here. I want to, I want to make interiors, like uh, nature interiors, if that's even a thing, or you know, science fiction type of stuff. And it's all just a, this big, long learning process. And the more you screw around with it, the more you, the more you just put into it, the more you get out of it. And, it just becomes this wonderful positive feedback loop, just like anything else that's difficult. I guess we're adding a little more, uh, just little highlights in here. Man, this music is relaxing as hell. Don't I know it. Yeah, we need another shape in here. It's a little, this kind of dark space. It's too much, it's like a big blob. So let's put another another shape here behind that kind of, that one vertical one. I will make this something that kind of, we'll fill it in with a dark color. And this will kind of pull that eye a little more towards that little sliver the tunnel entrance or whatever you want to call it down there always good to name your layers especially ones that you know of. yeah you're gonna go back and you're gonna probably play around with them and just make your life a little easier You know, what do you guys like to draw? I'm not sure too many people even listen to these videos, but I wonder what you guys like to draw. We all kind of have our little little happy places that we, we live in. Yeah, just, like, just like this little happy piece of ground right here. Just chilling, light nugget. I'm gonna paint a little more in, I guess. A little more kind of, I don't know what you would call this, like, uh, I mean, it's like, it's kind of like dust, but it's almost more, it's like the light bounces off the ground, you know? And we probably want to just get in there with a nice soft, you know, soft round brush. On its own layer like you do. And just a little kind of, I don't know, ground glow. Just to give it a little bit of a vibe. And there's no rules to any of this. We're just picking up colors using the eyedropper tool, which intuitively enough is just hitting the letter I on the keyboard. You're seeing them getting a lot of mileage out of these kind of uh, texture, rocky shape brushes here. If you don't have access to those, I can uh, absolutely put a link down 
in some of my other videos too. I'm using a, I'm using a set of brushes that a lot of people use, and uh, and I think we're all having a good time. So just adding another little piece back here on this other rock, imagining that the light is going to come through and hit this little piece. We're just moving it around, and that's why we put everything on its own layer, so we can move it around or potentially decide that it completely blows and then give a nice schmack on the old delete key, and it's gone, gone. So I'm going to bring down this little highlight here. Just have it come down to the cable a little more. You know, just to try to bring your eye down a little bit is, is really what it is. But at the end of the day, I'm just thinking like, yeah, it looks better. Neat. You can always go back. As I said, you can always go back, get rid of stuff and move it all around. You're not married to any of this, of course, you know. But just adding little bits of information here. Just with this big soft brush. I never have it turned to a hundred and a hundred. Usually it's about like 60, 50, 70 something, blah, bitty, boom, blah. Whatever feels right. I mean, this is your world. There's no need to uh, ascribe any predetermined rules. That's just completely ridiculous. I duplicated that little, that little bit. I'm just gonna move it around to create other. Potentially create other shapes. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. It's all right, you know. You know, failure is a part of a part of succeeding. You know, you have to try. If you don't try, you, you know, you miss one hundred percent of the shots that you don't take. You miss out on petting every single dog that you don't try to pet. Just playing with that adjustment layer up on the top there. Yeah, and this one, this video also, I'm not super getting into the nitty gritty of all the little buttons. Um, but now we're just gonna make a little dude down here. What's up, little dude? Let me just start with pretty, you know, basic uh, whatever the hell that is. Some little feetsies on his little cape. All using the lasso tool, and you get that by just by hitting L. For loser, L for loser. I mean for um for awesome. And you can always just add on this and hit delete or option delete to fill and delete to erase, obviously. And a little arm on there because we can't have a little dude unless he's got a stick. And no, nobody in any of my whatever the hell these things are knows how to walk without a big ass stick. And apparently, you know, sticks are really trending. All the influencers on Instagram seem to have sticks. They don't. Well, we'll just give this dude a little st stick, a radio. And it's good for, you know, defending yourself against douchebags who want to come after you for no reason or misinterpret things that you say, and get butt hurt, and play the perpetual victim. When really we're just trying to, I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about here. So there's his little shadow, and there's a little guy down there. Hey buddy, uh, what should we name this guy? I mean, you know he's going to be named Steve. Right, Steve? He's got a jacket. Now he's got a collar. What's going on over here? It's a kind of jacket. 
You look like you're wearing a ninja turtle shell under your thing here, buddy. What do you got, a backpack under there? Oh, look, now you got a mohawk. Neat. I'm thinking probably it's more like a, uh, you know, like a Roman helmet type of dealy majig. And that's okay, you don't have to look that great, because I have a feeling, you know, something's going to eat you soon, my friend. And my guess is you probably have it coming. Give you a little spear for doing some stabbings. Or, you know, cooking hot dogs. Which are disgusting, by the way. Definitely not a hot dog guy, personally. Unless they're the really nice ones from the local Polish supermarket that I can get. That are, like, really thin and crispy. And you can see they're, like, the meats in there. It's not like this, I don't know, mist, mist, pink mystery foam. I'm just playing around with this dude's shapes, and this is always a fun thing to do. I mean, probably could have done this a little bit faster, but I'm not in any rush. You guys in a rush? The only time I'm ever rushing is when I got some poopins coming. And right now, there's no poopins coming. We, we took care of all that already. You'll all be very happy to know. So you see we made like a new hero layer, clipping mask layer, whatever you want to call it, over this. And I think we're going to add in some, uh, we can either do this with levels, just kind of lighten a little bit, or we can make a new layer and put it over that so we have a little more control. Because, you know, hey, let's face it, there's a lot of things in life you can't control. But, you know, it's nice here, you can control some of this stuff. So we just added little, you see the little little kind of highlights there and we're just going to add a couple more in on a new hero layer and a big soft brush with some gray not overthinking it too much you know generally don't think too much in general so why would this why would this be any different it's just wandering into traffic Little eraser, little brush, little eraser. Little mystery foam hot dogs right here. And that's good enough for now. Let's leave a little dude. Unless, of course, we decide to just completely nerd out on this tiny little piece. That's fun, too. You're not even that far into this, and it... It's kind of starting to give a little depth here. That's what we want. We want to create depth. We want we want a space that pulls your eye in. So I'm back on this curves layer, and I'm I'm just adding a gradient to it. Just you just hit G on the keyboard, and just playing around. You can see in the adjustment layer there, the white part on the bottom is where the curve is actually visible, and then the dark part up top on it. If you look in the thumbnail is where that curve is going to be, you know, much less in effect. So we can just kind of, you know, without having to go through each layer and, and push it darker to bring it into where we feel the values should be, you just throw this adjustment layer on it. And he's my friend, your friend. I'm just selecting bits by holding down command and then clicking on the little thumbnail in there. It'll automatically select the part that you want to have your way with. And you just want to take this piece of rock and bend it over the pinball machine. You can absolutely do that. Just hit command and then click on the thumbnail and you'll be given carte blanche to do whatever terrible thing that you feel like doing. So now we've got black, and we're just adding little bits of even darker 
darker bits in here and just just really squiggling that lasso tool just a little haphazardly and that's okay so we've got that and I'm just gonna use a level on here because I don't want to have too many layers affecting the thing I mean you can really go as many as you want but in this case it wasn't that important that I have that so I just hit command L drop that black down from the left give it a little scooch and let's see let's go in our let's find a happy color this is my little folder of artwork and images that I've collected up that I really like the color palettes you saw a bunch of Amir Zan painting in the paintings in there because that dude is an absolute unit one of my one of my favorite concept artists by far he has such a unique and wonderful style so what we can do here is just by opening that other image right we go into image adjust match color and you can select you see I've selected this orange and it's automatically gonna make everything that color palette but you, you have to merge it all down because it will only affect one layer right so I guess I was happy enough with the overall composition here that I was okay with this and once you have this you've got a few options you can either you know just use this take the opacity down and just use it as a kind of a coloring layer you could keep that layer at a hundred percent and then just start building on top of that you can change that layer into like a uh, an oh you know use the blending and put it to like overlay or soft light or whatever looks right sometimes it's just fun to dig through those little blending modes until you find something that's cool maybe you even get a little a little happy accident that doesn't involve you hiding your underwear in a public bathroom you know that's that's the kind of happy accident you want to have so already just adding that little bit of warmth kind of gets us uh you know just gives us a little a little something 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 so i want to put a little dust right because we have this dust that kind of catches the glow and it also kind of blends the figure in there a little better, which is nice. And overall, so far, I'm not super angry about this. So now we do a little smudgy woogie. So these these lines of these light in this cave, they're just too crisp it's too crisp man so we're just gonna give him a little smudgerino maybe a little up and down maybe a little side to side maybe a little wiggle waggle that's your world you scooch it how you like it and just going in a bunch of this other little bits while we're scooching I'm painting a little, little, little darkness on here. All right, so after you'll notice if you look in the layer palette, you see, you know, three down there. You've got this kind of warmer one. I drop the opacity down and got it into a good place, and the Shift Command E, or well, Shift Command N, Shift Command E. Sorry. Command Option Shift N, Command Option Shift E, and that's going to give us a whole flattened layer. And in this case, we're just going to kind of paint on top of it. We're just adding some of these little highlights. We want to kind of let this light come down from the top left and flow down through this little happy pain cave. All right, and also now that we have a kind of Kind of colorized version here. We can uh, we can start using the color picker, and instead of it being, you know, if I want like a little highlight color, I don't have to use white. I've now got these warm tones I can choose from. Nice warm tones, and just giving little little schmoozies to some of these bottom bits here. 
you don't want everything to be too crisp, right? Because then it's a different kind of look. But if you're going to do it, go with it. If you want to make everything crisp and have something that's a more stylized illustration, you can absolutely do that. You know, find find your own way. Like, find a flow that feels good and is right. I love that there's no rules to any of this. And that's that's the beauty of art. I mean, who's to say what's good and what's bad? I mean, you can you can comment maybe on a technique and say, oh, that's not quite right, or something. But you know, this is art and it's subjective. Even using the term art itself is subjective, right? Like, I would never say something is bad. You could say it's derivative, right? But that's okay, too, because, you know, everything is derivative of something. You know, and it, I think maybe part of the, the good decision-making is knowing what amazing things you want to derive your art from. You know, like... If you're going to ape something, ape something that's absolutely awesome. And I would also highly recommend trying to punch over your weight. If you think that something out there has a higher skill level than you have, like you're like, I just can't do that. I'm never going to be able to do that. Well, you'll get closer by trying and you'll push yourself further. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm doing that here, but you know, Try to rip off the best. If you're going to rip something off, rip off that good stuff. That really, really good stuff. So we're just adding a you know, little more bits of this cave here. You see, it's kind of bringing that light down, reflecting. Giving some space through this cave that leads us into our little dude down here. Hey, little dude. You know, little Steve who's just taking a walk. Yeah, this cave needs a little something. It's a little too peaceful. Nothing, nothing screams relaxing than giant freaking spider webs. Because if there's anything that makes people feel comfortable, it's giant spiders. So relaxing. Hell, I see a tiny little spider. I get a little freaked out. Except some of those little jumping spiders. They're kind of cute. They have a tendency to look at you. They got these big eyes. I don't get the sense that that dude wants to wrap me up in a cocoon, inject me with poison, and then drink my guts out. I don't get that vibe from that guy. So, you know, we're cool. Me and Jumping Spider, we're cool. Oh, just adding more of these and you see we have the brush set about you know 60 40 it's a teeny weeny little brush sometimes some of us have teeny weeny little brushes it's it's not our fault you're born that way Right, so just little zoops, and I'm a lefty, so it's easier for me to pull, pull down from right to left. And sometimes I just flip the canvas so I can use the natural flow of my hand instead of kind of adopting some weird uh, posture on the tablet so that I can kind of do that. We have the options, we can rotate, we can flip. These little highlights, you see the little highlight on the top there from the light coming in? It's nice. Oh my god, I can't believe I hadn't even saved this yet. What a douche. I was having some pretty serious Photoshop crashing issues and uh... 
was a little bit of a bummer considering I had upgraded to Creative Cloud, but you see we got this, we created this little funnel web here with these, uh, with these webs. Right, right, I guess, right, funnel web, it's pretty much implied. But we're gonna make a new layer and I'm just gonna make some leggies. Happy little spider legs. Ah, uh, here it tastes just like chicken. But a little sweet, sweet chicken. Alright, some little legs, little segmenty buddies. Just using the lasso tool and we'll, you know, once we have something that seems, you know, rem remotely feasible, we'll just fill it in. Right, I mean, I'm not sure what kind of meal this spider's gonna get from our little guy Steve here. He's just such a little guy. But, you know, painting this in, and that's okay, we just need flat shapes. I use the eyedropper and I grab the color. And it's your world and your spider and you make it as big or as small as you want. And we're just kind of erasing out a little bit so it creates the sense that, uh, you know, it's coming out from this hole. What should we name this little spider? Maybe he's also named Steve. Maybe Steve's gonna eat Steve? There's nothing worse than Steve on Steve crime. Steve's gotta love each other. I'm just erasing out little bits to give this, uh, these little absolutely, totally shit spider like shapes that I made here a little bit of depth. Right, and when I draw, a lot of times I'll draw like little creaturey buddies. Um, just the creaturey buddy himself. We don't need no happy pancake. But I do these little creaturey buddies, and I, one of the th really easy move is uh, just doing some kind of cross stroke, whether it's an erase stroke or a painting in stroke. I'll give it a little, little, little something, something. At this point, I realize there's just not a w enough webs to make this place feel like home. So we're gonna add a little, little more. You know, maybe there's some little webby, clumpy buddies up there that are kind of anchoring the happy spider webs. And again, it's your world. We're just living in it. You know, it's when I did this, I didn't have any kind of plan. And that's the whole fun thing. I think I just started out, it's a little bit of a lie. I did have a plan, I wanted to make a cave, but I had no idea that it was going to become a happy little spider pain cave, that's just, uh, I guess that's just a natural evolution. Maybe your cave is a puppy cave. Oh man, that sounds awesome, actually. A oh, cave full of puppies, just millions of them, they, they kill you by smothering you and snuggling you to death. Oh, it's delicious and we're gonna get some foreground Steve so 
I guess in my head here, I'm thinking, uh, do you remember the Dark Crystal? Of course you do. The, uh, oh, I can't remember the names. The, uh, those big spider crab things that kind of go out. And, I mean, those things are absolutely amazing. Those are all practical, practical puppets. There's a guy in every single one of those things. And Not sure if any of you guys saw the uh, Netflix, or I think it was Netflix, made that Dark Crystal, Dark Crystal little, little series thing. And you know, I'm not sure I had an opinion on it. I think I was just glad that it existed, if I'm being honest. So we'll give this little happy foreground Steve. Um, we'll give him a big fat leg. Hey, big fat leg, big fat Steve. We'll pick a color, and we selected Steve by doing a command click on the thumbnail. And you hit command D just to hide it so it's still activated, you just can't see it. Right, so if I were to go outside of the lines, it's okay, it will only be in this little area. And I don't want to do another layer on top of this, it's, we're not making such a bold, a bold move here that we need to, uh, you know, worry about having that level of control on it. Uh, you gotta realize we really don't have any control. It's just we're living in a simulation. We're not. It's stupid. And we're just doing the same technique that we do with everything. We're just using that lasso tool. Creating little nuggies, painting in some tone skis, and uh, and seeing what happens. Not every move is good. That's why commands. That's why God created Command Z. All right, little squiggles, little textures. We actually made a new layer because we're going to add another leg in here. I do want to have control over that. So a new layer for the leg. Just a random shape that's kind of spider-ish or Steve-ish if you will. And we're going to just keep that guy, fill him in with black. Maybe give him some little, little color buddies, little nuggy information here. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm loving this. Yeah, I'm not even sure this guy's gonna stay, but that doesn't mean we can't have a fun time trying to build him up. Is it creepier the better? And we don't want to get too stuck with the shape of the legs because Lord knows we could just move things around forever. Sometimes it's important to just kind of, you know, finish taking your dump and get the hell off the toilet. You got other things to do. Just more highlights, a little bit of information on this guy's spiders carapace I think that's the right word for that I'm trying to avoid words that have a P because it pops on the microphone so carapace was a not a good choice but moving this guy around and yeah it's getting kind of spidery right And there's nothing more fun than just overthinking the crap out of something and getting stuck on it. Until you realize, as I said, your legs are going numb and it's time to get the hell off the toilet.
you know, the five YouTube videos you watch, they're over. You can watch them from the couch. You don't need to continually destroy your legs. So I wanted some more spider legs for our whole Steve here. And instead of drawing new ones, I just duplicated the ones I had. And we're going to take those and we're going to just kind of give them some, uh, just little tweaks so it doesn't look like we're just duper rooping in. And it's just happy little spider legs. And I'm pretty sure that very much unlike the Lord of the Rings, if these spiders hop onto this dude, uh, he's not he's not gonna pull a Samwise. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be dinner. All right, so. Yeah, spider's a little smaller. Maybe it was better bigger. Maybe it's better smaller. There's no rules. Because we don't know. Maybe this is a baby spider. Maybe this is not the mommy spider. Now yeah, we turned him off because... Because why the hell not? Not everything is great. I'm just giving this a little thought here. Sometimes you just gotta look at it. You know, and I apologize that I didn't have a better road map here. But this is really how it is, you know. You, you kind of let it flow. Unless you have a brief that really dictates the elements. Sometimes you just want to let these things evolve, you know. Now we got our spiders turned off and we're... We're doing a little cave zhuzh. Little web decorating. Just giving these kind of some darker, darker mid-tones here. A little squiggle, 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 squaggle, squaggle, squaggle. Just pulling it down, making them webs. Have any of you guys seen uh, Love, Death, and Robots Season 1, specifically Into the Aquila Rift, where uh, the, I guess you call it an Eldridge spider, comes out of the cave, and when it first comes out, it almost, you almost would think that it's a human form. I'm 99% sure that that creature, which literally when it it came on the screen i stood up off my couch and i started screaming because i was just so delighted with with the character design but i'm 99 percent sure that 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 spider that eldritch human form spider uh that apparently is the i mean i guess i'm going to spoil it was the the human that the person in the story thought I'm pretty sure that that was designed by robot pencil Anthony Jones the man the myth of the legend himself one of my art heroes probably should be one of yours too but uh, I literally stood up and I, I paused it I took a photo I sent it to some of my friends I was like look at this this is this is it like just drop the microphone, Anthony. You did it. You won. So I'm sure at some point during this, I was thinking, sure, I'd love to do that, but let's be real. Ain't nobody got time for that. Except for Anthony Jones, the man. Maybe that's a little exploration project for another day. So let's add some little bloody bits on here. Or maybe they're bloody bits, or maybe they're, uh, 
They're just natural spider coloring. We've seen red and black spiders out in the world, little black widows. Steve's girlfriend. Not just adding some little nuggy wuggies in here. Not overthinking it too much. I mean, we're getting kind of towards the end and all you need is enough to kind of hint at it, right? Just enough to communicate. And we zoom in here and we see that these spider webs are an absolute disaster. But, uh, you know, let's add some red into our little spear Steve here. We've got a little red, little red cape, little red riding dead. Now, I don't imagine on his back that would be a red something. It's probably going to be a shield, but one thing at a time. Just a little hint of color. Right now we're going to give a little flippy dip because sometimes it's easier to, you know, as I said, I'm a lefty, so my natural hand move is right to left right I'm pulling pulling you can't see what I'm doing with my hand I'm I look like an idiot but I have it set my key command that I have set is a uh, command option F for flip makes sense I had to find something that wasn't already being used and we're making some little Steve adjustments Okay, move those eyes down a little bit, just using the lasso tool, then hitting V will let us just kind of move that one little bit of radio. Have any of you guys ever been in a real cave? Like a real cave? I've never been in a real cave. I've been down a deep dark hole, but that's different. That's a metaphor. Yeah, I wonder if this guy just thought he was going to maybe take a little shortcut. Oh, looks like we moved some stuff and ruined it. So since I've got those red bits, I'm just going to scooch him back onto our guy here. I have a funny feeling. I Yeah, no, I guess that's okay. All right, and I'm selecting these bits because I don't want to, uh, you know, I may have made a booby and uh, put too many too many different elements on one layer. It's alright. You can just lasso tool and move it. And we'll give our little Steve the Centurion a little bit of love before he becomes a little bit of launch. Nothing like a little grim dark and a little coffee to get your day going. You know, you turn on the news and it's all bad. It's all hate this, hate that, civil war, let's go. And you know, one couldn't could couldn't be blamed for uh, letting that get him down. But uh, you know, you throw yourself some grim dark spider launch, and then when you walk outside, you're like, oh, this is great. It's, there's no spider that's gonna eat me. And just a little gratitude goes a long way. You know, adding a little more of these, uh, you know, kind of uh, glowy, ambient, ambient vibes here from the sunlight that's probably bouncing all around this happy spider cave. We're just painting out little bits of this adjustment layer. 
you can really do a lot with the adjustment layers. Duh. Yeah, taking a look at this. Oh, that's really dark. It's too dark. But sometimes a little drama, a little chiaroscuro, if you will. Which I think means, um, I think it's Italian for Chicken McNugget. I'm not sure 100% about that. You might want to check me. I'm painting out this adjustment layer. Let's give a little love back to little Steve's legs over here. Spider Steve. And a little bit of light beams. Light beams. Just using a big soft brush, pulling down. Not a ton of pressure. You could also uh, hold down shift and that'll give you well, if you start and then shit, you know, that's, I guess that's another mechanic we should talk about later, but shift can give you straight lines. I'm just bringing a little bit of this information back and by making everything darker and then painting out the bits, it gives us a little control about where our eye's gonna go, what parts we wanna make important, didn't I say I wasn't going to say P? Yeah, there's a lot of P, P going on here. And just a little nuggy here, a little zhuzhy over there. Y'all using the big soft brush. And we got that. Let's turn this down a little bit. I think it's getting a little too contrasty. And in retrospect, I think I liked it without it. But, but that's the beauty of adjustment layers and separate layers. You could always turn them off, delete them. You can literally curse them out and let them know that we're not mad. We're just really disappointed. All right, and I'm just adding a new layer on top because sometimes it's fun to play with some cropping. As much as I love that upper area... Sometimes the story is, is somewhere else. And it's all part of the journey. You know, I don't hate this like this. You know, Steve and his new friend, Spider Steve, they're not completely uninteresting, right? I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, let's see what's going on all up here. I like this part too. I feel like this little light shape worked out not terribly. It looks like we're almost there. You gotta know when to kinda call it quits. And I think at that point we're gonna leave that right there. So I hope you enjoyed making your own little happy, happy spider pain cave. If you followed along, if not, if you just listened to my voice, totally doing everything wrong, which there is no such thing as, then that's great too. I'd like to thank you all for watching. This is Gothros, signing off, and I'll see you guys next week with some more happy, happy, happy goodness. I love you.